Hi, this is Andrew Krug, the Global Community Manager for Niantic Labs, and you're listening to the Agent Academy Podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash agentacademy. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle or MP3 player. And now, welcome to the Agent Academy. Downloading latest Intel package. Welcome back. I was getting worried about all you. Agent Academy, episode number 66, recorded on October 18th, 2019. I'm Agent Goonie Guy. I'm Agent Dewey J. And I'm Agent Vane. And, you got. and we've been gone for uh, quite a long time, as, as you might know, and uh, we have a special guest today, and we've got a lot to talk about, and uh, these two agents are going to let me know what's been going on, because I've been out of the world of ingress for the most part, and um, I guess my week's really short, or my month and a half, so or two months, whatever, so I'll, I'll go real quick. Um so I got a new phone recently. I got the the uh, Note 10, and um, I come from a Pixel 3, which just wasn't cutting it. Trying to do Ingress and other games. I won't mention the names. Don't want to inf- offend anyone. But uh, uh, it, with the Pixel, as soon as you went to another game, it would drop Ingress basically out of the RAM. So you'd have to kind of like reload it every time you went back and forth, and it was just. Uh, really annoying. So with this one, I can actually run three games at once, and there's like no problem because it it has like 12 gig of RAM compared to three. So um, if if you're having that issue with a phone, you might want to check the specs and see if it's a RAM thing. I know the new Pixel they just announced the four is going to have six gig, so that should help uh, a bit uh, as long as the motion stuff. Maybe if with the new mo, I don't know if y'all seen it, but the Pixel Four it'll have the it has like a a cone of uh, the text motion and stuff above it, so you can do swipes without touching the screen. So oh, maybe you can a cone of silence. Yeah, so maybe you can um, I don't know hack a portal by doing that. But anyway, um, uh oh, Alexa's calling me. But um, uh, that's <laughs> about. I, I've been just uh, work. I don't know if y'all. What are you her. doing, Alexa? Alexa stop. Sorry. Hang up the just hang up the call, Alexa. <laughs> right. Uh, so I, I've been uh, working a lot, um, so I haven't really had much time to play, and that's why we haven't been doing the show because I've been just working like sixteen-hour days, and um, hopefully that's ended. Uh, but it has put me way behind on my my AP like gains that I, I like. I had it planned out. I was going to get to sixteen. Like this month, and then next month for the yearly thing, if they do the double AP, I don't know why they wouldn't. Uh, I was going to recurse and see how far I could get, and now it's going to be like getting to sixteen during it. So that's been a well, little how far frustrating. Off are you? Like I am one point five uh, million AP. One point five. Okay, so here, here I'll issue the challenge as you know my first time on the show here. I'm five hundred k short of fifteen on this recursion. So I'll race you to 16. Let's see. <laughs> oh, man. That's going to be tough. Just like, please don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so we'll do that. I think you'll still beat me, but... Uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but And we also have... Um, we'll get more into, I guess, who Vane is in a minute, because you're going to talk about yourself and what you've been up to. But uh, we've got a new agent on the show, Vane. Um, he's going to start hopefully being on as often as he, he uh, has time to be. I and will note it's another green player. Just I just want to note another green player. So now the challenge is for Dewey J to find another resistance player. And then we'll yeah. have like the four square. Okay, I can do that. And then we can start can... working on the Brady Watch. Yeah. Yeah, hey. The out. <laughs> and then we can start doing challenges against each other or even like no, maybe not expect, but we'll figure out some stuff. But anyway, before we get to Vane, Agent Dewey J, uh, how you been? I, I've been all right. Um, of course, 
retired and now I picked up three jobs. So I, I was kind of like you, I've been kind of busy, but I've been able to get out, uh, got to run a little bit of a recharge room and uh, I don't know how far back we went. Did go to, go to Madison um, and, and I've got a couple ops in. I got I got a pretty good sized bath in today. It made it through one whole checkpoint. Um, nice. So still still on along. Uh, got about, I think, 250K to, to hit 15. So I should hit that fairly soon. And um, hopefully by the next show, we might have something interesting to talk about. But let's just leave it at that. So everybody start looking for lanes right now because Dewey J is calling it. But so I am not calling it until right now. No, it's, 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 some, it's something, something just for, for me. So, so, but your recharge room, like uh, what, what, what went on there? How was that? Uh. Well, we you know, saw obsec. We can uh... yeah, obsec. Yeah, we, we just sat around and drank beer and uh, charged less and less as we went. So uh, you know, pretty much a regular recharge room. Oh, it's like the whole anomaly strategy. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Just you know, start out strong, and sometime before you end. Uh, Find but, no, it, it was a good time. We got to, got to see some some of the local cell players that we don't get usually get to see, and uh, did a little bit of recharging and. I don't know if we helped out a whole lot because you stinking frogs seem to just sweep this last anomaly. All we could do is take Europe and you guys just beat the snot out of us in Asia and, and America. So, but you know, I guess that's payback for Chicago. Always remember Chicago. Always. We always <laughs> Three Chicago. years from now. I guess it's payback from Chicago. It's payback for Chicago. <laughs> I got one of the buses out back. <laughs> but, uh, other than that, no, just, uh, I, although you had talked about getting used to uh, using Prime mm-hmm. and, and getting away from Redacted and stuff like that, and it, Redacted has gone away since the last time uh, we, we broadcast. And just today, did a little op with uh, an agent that was one of those that held on to Redacted to the last minute. And he was having troubles. He's like, oh, I, yeah. I, can't, I can't throw with this. I'm like, you can throw, yeah, you just make that muscle memory. Muscle memory takes time. You yeah. got to get it down. He ended up throwing to the wrong portal, and we had to, you know, had to use a virus and start again. But uh, well, there you were inoculated. Yeah, that, <laughs> good. yeah, we didn't use that portal though. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> but uh, that's that's been about it. Well, that's good. And uh, Vane, you want to uh, tell us what you've been up to and uh, tell us about I'm who you enough. are. Give people a little bit of uh, uh, background. You've done some um, go rock. Uh, videos for us and and we've had those on the show uh, but it's really good getting you on the show so yeah so let's see since uh, last asian academy episode where i didn't exist um <laughs> so let's see it was born in oh wait okay, yeah we, we probably shouldn't go that far back but um <laughs> yeah it, it's been it's been very busy lately um between work and all of the like ingress traveling uh, obviously, was on the ground for for Brooklyn. Did the the stealth ops go ruck there? Uh, which actually, you know, Dewey J, I think you'd be proud to hear that the boys in blue uh, did take the stealth ops challenge, yeah, three to zero, uh, res to ENL. Um, great showing on both factions. Really love the community that we have there for for stealth ops. So you know, just a shout out to that group. I hope to see everybody back at future events. Um, other than that. I just was captaining a regular ground team. Uh, had a blast in Brooklyn, despite some of the you know shortcomings with network issues, a little bit of issues with the servers on Ingress side of things. But things seemed to play out relatively well for the majority of people once the day got started. We had a little bit of trouble towards the end of the anomaly, but um, I think America we got a little bit more lucky than some of the other sites. Yeah. So I'll just leave that at that. Um, in terms of like anything else that I've been doing in day-to-day, uh, I'm actually just kind of ramping up for a GORUCK light. So not so much on the ingress side of things, um, although now that Brooklyn is over, I can actually go out and play ingress because planning for ingress is no longer getting in the way of actually going outside and playing. <laughs> so I'm 500k short of level 15, so that's going to be what I'm working on now, but I guess I just kind of glazed over the whole background side there, but for those of you that um, I haven't had the opportunity to meet yet, um, hi, my name is Vane. Nice to meet you. Uh, okay, this is where you say something, and then we go back and forth. So um, I've been playing Ingress since 
2012 December ish. Uh, actually started out first year and a half as resistance. Yay! Uh, and change over to green. Yay! Um, had, it was the better dental. The the yeah. dental care guy. Yeah. Yeah. Did you didn't um, talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no. So that's where I'm coming from. Well, and so you're going to do the uh, go rec light you were talking about. Is that uh, are you yeah. nervous about that? Is that is it more strenuous than the uh, ingress? So I, I've heard like multiple stories from from every side of the fence here. Um, when I started doing GORUCK Stealth Ops for Ingress, they were at a 12-hour format. So the first Stealth Ops event that I participated in was in Orlando for Obsidian Anomaly Series. And I was just kind of like the dead ringer for Ingress <laughs> Trivia. They're like, we just need some nerd on the team that can answer trivia questions about the lore. And that way, we don't have to do PT. Um, which I don't even think we ended up having a trivia challenge at that uh, <laughs> first event that I attended. But at the end of those 12 hours, after having paid, you know, whatever the registration fee was, I was hooked for some reason um, and decided that I was just going to keep coming back. So what a lot of people will tell you in the Ingress Go Ruck community is that some events compare to, you know, Go Ruck Light events. Some of the old events used to compare to Go Ruck Tough a little bit. Um, but really, this is my first dip into the waters of GORUCK, so to speak. So uh, I'm a little nervous, but people keep telling me, they're like, you're going to do fine. Stop worrying. But that's just my nature. Well, that sounds awesome. You'll have to report back and, and let us let agents around the world know how it is. And, and maybe that'll uh, help them ease their worries. And maybe they'll try them as well in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a, it's a Halloween-themed GORUCK light. So talking to the, the cadre that we had in Brooklyn for the Stealth Ops, he is actually the same cadre that is going to be at the Halloween light. And uh, we're supposed to have costumes. Costumes are required. So cadre asked me outside of the after party bar, he's like, so Vane, uh, you know, what's your costume going to be? And at first, my costume idea was like, you know, I'll go as like a new member of Nemesis or something. And uh, Cadre didn't seem very impressed on that. So <laughs> He was like, how many to, people will get that reference? Yeah, going to have to scrap that idea and just kind of go back to the drawing board with the little amount of time that I have left here. <laughs> so like a frog, just a... Go with, yeah, go with, totally. go with a Hank Johnson. Just go with a frog. You could, be, you could be a Hank Johnson. We we only have two. We have four. Yeah, totally. I can just I got a mod card. I can just like glue it to the forehead there. We're, we're good. Net never enough Hank Johnsons. <laughs> so no double Johnson, not enough. We we have a ton of news to get into, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, dip on into situation report. This is uh, the time where we talk about what's been going on, and and uh, we've been gone for so long that uh, there's a ton of stuff that went on. So we will um, get to probably a lot of the newer stuff and and kind of touch on some of the older stuff, just because you're probably uh, well aware of of that stuff. But first, I think the big thing is uh, everybody's just coming off uh, the last anomaly, Umbra. And uh, there's some uh, news that's that's come out actually today. Some of it, uh, and then there's old stuff. Um, the best stuff, though, is that uh, Enlightened One Umbra. <sighs> no soundboard. Oh, boo. Um, it's okay. They'll they'll make the you know the finale. It'll just be a winner take all situation. So we just like. To <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, all that stuff I did all year long. It means nothing. <laughs> so, but um, any memorable moment, moments? Anything uh, you want to mention about the anomaly itself? Uh, I mean, he'll probably have to talk to it more than I did. I mean, from our from our perspective, we were recharging for Brooklyn, and it just seemed like it was just green all over the board. And you know, we were telling ourselves, you know, well. The board was really green in Chicago. We thought we lost that, so we'll do well. So we were just kidding ourselves. Yeah. So I, I will say that, that green seemed to have a real good handle on 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 the ground, uh, at least from what we could see. And this was, um, I guess, the, the first anomaly that 
uh, was a, a, well, I guess there was, you could buy tickets. So, okay, I guess we can, we kind of dip into other news at the same time, but mm -hmm. uh, Umbra was the, the first anomaly that they kind of introduced this pay to, um, pay to get a badge, I guess is the easiest way to say it. Yeah. Pay to play, sort of. Yeah, th I think this is the first one. And again, I don't know all the lore. This is the first one I can remember that you actually had to pay to participate offsite as well. Yeah, at least to get the get a badge. Get the badge. Yeah. Yeah, to get the badge. Which, um, which I part of me thinks that maybe that was the the driving force behind doing it in the first place, just because they knew there were so many people that were involved, possibly not to you know dip into obsec there right but uh uh the, there's a lot of untapped money there so how can they do it and can they see if they can make money off uh people playing remotely um and then uh you know people who go there uh they could pay to get the badge it was basically about 15 bucks and then you could they they introduced later because a lot of people were um upset about this new uh, thing and I don't know if it was so much. I mean, there was like half of it was because of the money, but the other half was more, I think, because of the timing too. Because you know, people already made plans to go and and this or that, and then all suddenly this new thing, and, and then it's just change, you know. Yeah, yeah. T talking with the community a lot um, right after the registration announcement went live, a lot of feedback from individuals that I spoke to was at least. It, it, the, the monetary amount was so small of a you know thing for most people that they didn't so much care about that it was just the the timing of the announcement yeah. uh, now given you know other countries around the world yes uh, the money itself was a factor as well um, but I know a lot of people were just voicing if this was something that had been pushed out for the 2020s um, for those nemesis series sites it wouldn't have been as big of a deal of course, you know, we sit here and we talk about that, but we all know how the internet works. People are going to be angry any way that you split it. Yeah. But um, I, I do think that the timing was just the largest issue. And I, I do think that Niantic is aware of that. And um, moving forward, I, I personally feel that at least they will be aware of timing on those things. And like we got today the announcement about refunds and all of that other jazz coming in with the badge push. So yeah. You know, things are looking up despite that. Now, how many how many people uh, from Niantic were on site in Brooklyn? I mean, was there I know that was a big deal in Chicago. We saw a lot of their people and and when you got to um Wisconsin, uh you know, we didn't see anybody till the very end. And some people were like, "Well, it's like they're not running the show at all." Uh, but there, yeah, was so there Brooklyn there, there was nobody on site for Brooklyn. Uh, Sacramento did have, I believe, at least Brian Rose and a few other support staff were on site. Don't, don't quote me on that. I know Brian was there at least. Um, not sure about anybody else specifically. But I think that was announced ahead of time that this series, at least for Umbro, was still not going to have a lot of staff. You weren't going to see any of the, the characters on site. Um, so we didn't see, like, Hank Johnson or anybody yeah. Uh, floating around because they're all trapped in the anomalous bubble, so right. they can't get out. Right. Just well, yeah. comes, can't, they can't enter. I, I think there were there were some players that that kind of soured things. Especially, I don't know if you've seen the picture of uh, I think it's Dresden. Uh, there's a banner out front that, that thanks you know thank you for nothing. Um, and so I think there was I think that they kind of were like a double slap. You know, I have to pay, and on top of that, you don't have anybody here. Uh, yeah. But when you know, but when it comes down to it, when they talked about the uh, uh, refunds coming out and stuff like that. Most of the people that were in the recharge room and the other people I talked to, like, hey, I'm not going to give fifteen dollars back. You know, that's money well spent. You know, but I will, yeah, I will I take mean, the end game. But I mean, e yeah, even um, you know, just recharging is like it didn't even cross my mind to like, oh, I can get a refund. I'll get a refund because I mean, it's just you know, what's the real point of doing that? I yeah. could understand offering it and. Um, if someone yeah. feels like they need it, you know, get it. But uh, I, I heard a lot of, uh, I guess, the same, too, about, um, you know, it was, it was the timing of they were definitely pulling back people from the locations. And then um, it's like, and now we're go going to also charge for that. And I think, um, I don't know how warranted it is, but just in my head, like, just the whole 
like POC, and, and I wrote a big post about this on on the website, so you can kind of read in detail my thoughts. And and I definitely want to say that like, um, like Niantic still, you know, they're, they're great peeps in general, you know. And it's just like I don't want uh, anybody to think it's just that, that like there's nothing like no animosity or like I'm not mad at them like personally, but. Um, like just the fact that like POCs and stuff, it feels like they're on the hook for a lot of stuff, like financially wise, getting everything set up. And it, it feels like they're running the show, at, um, on the ground there. And at least to my knowledge, I, I don't feel like they really get anything from Niantic for that monetarily. So it's like, if something goes down with the hotels, they're the ones that kind of, you know, get screwed by that. And, it's like, and now we're paying money on top of it to Niantic and instead, and then none of that's going to the POCs to help them out with swag and things like that. And that's kind of, that's, that's probably the thing that kind of makes me the most upset about it. Um, and it looks like Dewey J is having some connection oh, no. difficulties. So yeah, I think he was uh, having some uh, trouble with his mic there. He was, he was pleading to you, Goonie guy. He was like, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh. And, just like that. <laughs> and I, I think apparently not. Like, are we safe? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I mean we're still streaming, so thing. we'll keep going, and he'll he'll come back when he's. Are you sure? Because if you're a simulacrum, this, this might not be good. Like, <laughs> dun, dun, I dun, need dun, to know dun. up front now. <laughs> you're next. You're next, Vane. Um, oh no! But like I said, yeah, I, I've, I, I've I kind of already gone through that and gone through the you know the nine stages of grief uh, about it and through the other side and and then after like all the work stuff, I'm like nah, you know. And what will happen will happen and um i do hope they they kind of listen to what the community said and and their their thoughts and i'm sure they are um so it'll be interesting to see what changes they make in the future like you you've already hinted at you know some of the stuff that um hopefully they will or won't i mean i don't know if you hinted but <laughs> your thoughts on it yeah I, um, I feel like just from what i from what i see forms post different news posts obviously things are, are difficult at the moment but they are trying and they do care yeah. they do want ingress to succeed um i think a lot of the roadblocks with prime have just been it's been like growing pains at this point yeah well and I, like i see i'm i'm kind of the opposite of like all the haters on prime i love prime like so much more than redacted like it's yeah it, and i'm I was there from the beginning uh, with Prime, and I was one of those those people that was like, "I love it," and everybody else is like, "What is wrong with you?" <laughs> right. um, I think it was just after after I got used to the initial, you know, muscle memory changeover. Yeah, sure, there there were a lot of bugs, there were a lot of glitches right during the initial launch, but I recursed when it was available, and just kind of set out to tell myself that I'm going to level up through the Prime scanner only. I'll keep redacted installed as a fallback you know, ops, emergency, things of that nature. But I've been using the Prime Scanner uh, like exclusively almost since it went live and really haven't had a lot of huge issues. Mm -hmm. Other people have had crashes, bugs. I've had plenty of crashes myself, but it hasn't really impacted my day-to-day -day gameplay significantly. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only time I see it go bad for me on a regular basis is when I'm going through capsules and I'm, we're dealing with inventory and that's where it, it tends to go south. Uh, but you know, I'm a hoarder, so I've got everything's full anyway. Um, yeah. I feel but, yeah, too that some bad. of it is, some of it feels like it's device specific as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talking I with a lot of people, I've heard that like, you know, Samsung eights for, for example, were having a huge issue with just the game crashing out frequently. Um, I have an essential phone and, don't have too many crashes. Sure, if I'm playing for four or five hours on an end, I might have two crashes. Yeah. But other people's experience were like, I'm crashing every ten minutes on a Samsung eight. Yeah. 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 I think and, the, only, uh, you know, the only other thing I hear kind of consistently is that it uh, it just doesn't really like you know, it's being in low cell signal. So there's some of those places that you could get to with redacted that you know, it's just darn hard or impossible to get to anymore with uh, Prime. And, yeah. and, you know, 5G comes around, that might take care of that. 
And we we did have a comment from uh, Tomogram in um, chat that I want to relay that uh, he said as a former ENL POC, Niantic never asks POCs to set up hotel swag after parties. Says we do it for our ENL agents. Niantic only asks POCs for input on the play box. Niantic doesn't really owe us anything. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, that's just. I think that they, if you used to be going to anomalies and seeing people on the ground and they're all of a sudden not there, that's, you know, that's what kind of rubs them the wrong way. It's like, you know, shoot, we could run our own anomaly if we wanted to, but she can't. But Well, and, and I got to say, like, Chicago was an anomaly of an anomaly. Like, it was so yes. big, and at least that's the first one. Um, I saw where they had like the one booth where everybody went to the same thing and and piled into the same hotel to yeah. to kind of sign up like that instead of you know each faction kind of had their own setup. So it was, it, I'm sure also like people who that was their first experience were like oh and then they went to the next one and were like wow yeah. this is completely different this what's going no on <laughs> yeah and, and, it, and it needs to make that special I mean that was the you know, quote unquote season ender yeah so it needed to be that way yeah. So yeah, I, I I really do hope that you know Niantic, if you're listening, um, for primary sites at least going forward, having the staff, having that little extra bit of flair, just having tents set up and some sort of common meeting area, that goes a long way. Agents love that. Everybody loves that. I don't think you're going to find too many detractors on that that are like, no, no, I don't want any of that. Go, go away. No. Well, and and that's I guess that's one thing. Are they going to bring primary sites back? You know, because it's they they stopped that after Chicago, right? Like they haven't had primaries and satellites. Yeah. We haven't had any announced yet, and, yeah. and hopefully, um, you know, whenever dates do get announced for the upcoming series, we have some sort of primaries or or some sort of information regarding what things are going to be at what sites and. Mm-hmm. Uh, extracurricular activities like go rug tie-ins um, those things from series to series typically we don't know so like you know myself wanting to sign up for a go rug stealth event i i won't know dates could be announced we might not know where go rug is we not might not know where intel ops is or any of the extras the bells and whistles so to speak yeah well and uh, see i was kind of hoping that they were and, and people may hate me for saying this, but I was hoping they would go to more of a, um, almost like mini anomalies, like with the field tests, like each month you kind of had this little, you know, more of a local kind of anomaly thing run by the local. And then like once a year have like one big anomaly or, or even maybe one in each, um, kind of area, one in, you know, in, in, uh, each country spread out through the year. But it's like each country had one big one that it was like you would see most of the people that you might only catch one or two at each, you know, anomaly through the year because everybody can't make it to everyone. And uh, and if you had one big one and then don't just have the anomaly, have the anomaly, but run it almost like a con, like a convention where you have like panels and and people come in and it's like a, a week weekend thing like for three days where it's just like nothing but ingress ingress bands playing ingress music you know but <laughs> artists and panels talking about you know the game and the future of it and the past and all the you know um you know we could do a panel the agent academy panel right like you have all this stuff and it's just a weekend of ingress and your friends and People would pay for that. People would pay 50 bucks for that or more for a weekend of that. And you throw in the anomaly with it. For 50 free. bucks to see us? I don't know. Not for <laughs> us. For a weekend of just being oh, a weekend. Oh, in okay. like a convention of... 50 cents to see us, maybe. I, I think... I don't know. It's just... Um, just coming from like going to a bunch of... Con- like 50 bucks, 100 bucks, depending on what it is, like how much there is involved with it. It's like... Um, it's worth it. Like it would, it would be so oh, much absolutely. fun. And, yeah. um, and anyway, and anomalies are, you're right with that, that like con weekend kind of feel. Cause I always refer to anomalies as like the anomaly circuit, the people that you see coming out to those events each and every time. Yeah. Um, where it, it's essentially like I've traveled to a lot of conventions over the years and now most of my convention budget goes to ingress anomalies. 
So, you know, I'm splitting a hotel room with six people just so I can keep going and going on to the next thing. But I, I do believe, and this might date me a little bit, but uh, Linda Besh, if anyone is familiar with that name, um, I, I don't even know when she left Niantic, any of that status, but uh, I believe she was the one that was pioneering sort of like an ingress con. Um, I don't think it ever quite took off and what it involved into at some point was sort of like the Camp Navarro events that we saw um, with the 2017 event in Navarro and then the, the 2018 in Navarro and Klausenberg. Um, those I would love to see come back. But yeah, yeah. even just having yeah. the one mega anomaly per region per year, I think that would definitely help with some player burnout. Um, it would also help too with, you know, spend the money on the, the big flare once a year and then do smaller field tests or other things throughout the year, the smaller challenges. Um, I do think anomalies have kind of evolved throughout the years. We used to have the big long campaigns where every weekend for six weekends straight, you had an anomaly somewhere. And now it's kind of gone into what I believe Niantic terms the anomaly seasons, right. where we have the two or three month window. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it, it can be, like you said, kind of a, almost like a burnout of it's just go, go, go for that time. And it's, it's um, especially as we all get older and families and <laughs> it's like it becomes harder to like uh, get that time. It's like uh, my, my son's going to college next year. So it's like I'm starting to have to like, you know, do a lot of that stuff, like college stuff and um <laughs> Spending time with him, you know. It's, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's Umbra, I guess. Um, um, so that, we we kind of we kind of mentioned it, but maybe we need to uh, put it all out there that an email came out uh, Friday afternoon. At least that's when I got mine, and uh, they were going to give back how much for store credit? Uh, thirty two, thirty two thousand. So 32, the, the store like, credit. If you're in the U.S., it's the 1999 pack. Yeah, so you can get your frackers, or you can get the the things that you can, the stuff you can no longer dupe in a, a Q cap. Uh, you can now buy, um, and then if if you really feel that you can get the fifteen dollars back, uh, they, they will. They have a process to do that. Um, I I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I I don't plan to get my fifteen dollars back, and I don't think I want to tell anybody to, you know, get your fifteen dollars back. Uh, I, I can see maybe those people that were at an anomaly, say in Asia, you know, where they had a couple hours of, you know, not being able to participate. Yeah, I can kind of see that. But, you know, 10 minutes of downtime or five minutes of downtime during an anomaly, you want all your money back. That's a, that's a little much, I think. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think I'm not going to pursue a refund either. Uh, Brooklyn, yeah. we had some issues, but. Like I was saying before we started the show, it was really hard to determine where the line in the sand could be drawn between network connectivity issues and, and mm -hmm. like ingress server issues. So at some point I switched over to the 3G network and it was like, hallelujah, things are working. Yeah. Uh, but it was really only that last like 45 minutes that is really bad. Kind of glitchy. Yeah, I would say uh, from off-site viewpoint, it, it seemed to start when the, um, the next anomaly started. So I don't know if it was like an issue with network because now they had a whole nother anomaly site that uh, they were having to push all the data to for all the the portals and and the you know the artifacts and everything around that. That's that's my guess. Just coming from like programming stuff. That's yeah. like where in you our get recharge hit. room it started having problems about our fifth round. But I yeah, think that I, that's I, I did hear that from a couple fifth, of people. Yeah, our fifth round of beer actually. But anyway, <laughs> not the fifth round of beer, but I, I, I was hearing reports that like, yeah, what Cooney guy was saying earlier, where Sacramento started up and then the U.S., you know, Brooklyn side of things really started kind of lagging a little bit yeah. towards the end there. Yeah. Uh, also, they, uh, the badges were pushed. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Um, I think that's, did, did I miss anything in there? We got refunds. Field we got uh, enlightened no, one. Uh, well, and, and we start in our next thing because they started with the tessellation. Okay, so tessellation. This is a lot of info, and I don't know wow. nothing about it except for uh, catching pieces of things about boards of hundreds of things on it and stuff. And 
So anybody want to talk about it? Media. Well, they yeah, Media. they kind of they kind of started a little bit of clues on that. They had, uh, uh, I think they had what four or five uh, live events with. Uh, they had Wendy. They had Hank. No, they didn't have Hank. They had uh, who all did they have? Uh, Devra. Uh, they had three or four people at about once a week. Oh, the they live streams. A, the live streams, and yeah. you could see that they were kind of hinting at it there. And then uh, finally, when the anomaly came around, that's when all the information really hit hit the fan, so to say. So, and Pag's kind of running the show on this thing, and I, it looks like he's like doing votes and and whatever. I, I think there's too much information for us to really get into it. Oh yeah, on yeah, the show, there's a lot to it. But so yeah, we'll no. link to all of that. Did you want to so, say something, Ben? I was saying, so Pac is, but Pac is, you know, posting everything to the community forum. So we get the the clues for where the tesserae uh, are going to spawn, which are the media items that you get that have the little hexagon shape in the media window in your scanner. Um, so those are what we're searching for when we get the clues. And the way that I've been talking to this about other players is, think about something like a global shard game, um, and then think about media, and Another analogy or way that you can look at it, if you've been in a recent anomaly that has had the media artifact scoring mechanism, this is essentially just the global scale of that. Um, except, you know, we're not getting ornaments, we're going to get clues to where media will spawn in portals, and then the first three agents of either faction to go and hack those can go through a lengthy voting process um, to determine where to place a tesserae or a hexagon on the tessellation game board. And then from there, there's a third party called the tethered hand, uh, which will actually place the tesserae based on our, our votes. So at that point, you know, enlightened can get points, resistance can get points, or if we're both wrong, nemesis gets points. Yeah. And so if you're, if you're an agent, that's you know, you're, a part-time player or not, you know, you're not up on lore, you don't care about lore, you get one of these weird uh, pieces, uh, it might be good to pass that on to somebody that's more connected. Uh, I, feel, I feel like I need to check right now. You probably have five of them sitting yeah. in there. Oh, what does it look like now? Yeah. No. One of the older ones are placed <laughs> already. Yeah, so they're just, yeah. it's a media item and it just looks like a hexagon, so the actual photo looks like a hex, but... Well, it, okay. and part of the stuff I yeah. saw was, I guess, dealing with some of the first ones that came out that uh, they weren't being hacked, so they just gave them to the people who hacked them first, and that kind of confused me. I was like, oh, so I don't have to like post anywhere. If I get one, I'll be safe, but no, that's not the case. If you get one, you need to let someone know. Yeah, I think so, because, I mean, some of them, I'm just looking at the ones that are already placed on the board, so some of them, they may just kind of look like, I guess you would say a character card. Uh, so they may have a character on it. Some of them may have uh, an NIA uh, kind of logo on it. Uh, there's a couple that are pictures of Nemesis. Um, so they could be a number of things, but they are hexagon in shape. Um, and I think they've got about 15, 16 placed on the board already. And I think there's, oh, I don't know, there's a whole bunch that can go on the board. I've got a um, bunch and, of hexagons, but I don't yeah. think they're, they're just and letters. Looking and stuff, at the man. score so far, um, the res have four, light has seven, boo. And <laughs> Nemesis, they have them down as the red team with 30. 30. So, yeah. So, so, so do y'all think. I feel like it, this is all kind of part of the push for x fact stuff almost like the everything against nemesis sort of thing like like do you think niantic wants to push ingress into uh less of team against team somehow get it into the same kind of area that pokemon go in is <laughs> in. Oh, no, 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 not at all no yeah i, I, I honestly I think I do think you're onto something there. I think it's you know, us against them mentality. That's that's kind of what's happening with, with Nemesis. But I don't think they want to split up. They don't want the factions to hold hands and go marching in together, so to say. Um, but you know, if we have to come together and work, we we can. 
you know, just yeah, like I think this specifically show. Specifically with the the tessellation, it's set up to where it is a you know winner take all at least from what we know currently between the three factions. Nemesis mm -hmm. being the third faction. So yes, while we all can vote on whatever choices we want to vote on, so like you know you could vote on a uh, resistance post Goonie guy for a, a placement piece if you so desired, but. You know, I would tell people that this is definitely not a buddy buddy X fac event. Uh, the mm -hmm. tessellation is is game on. It's faction versus faction versus nemesis. This isn't X fac versus nemesis. So what's the what's the prize at the end? Do we know yet? Has it been announced? So we 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 don't really know too much about what is at stake yet. Um, and I do apologize. I'm not a hundred percent up to date on the last few days of what has happened with. Uh, the initial discovery period for the six Tesserae that came out this week. Um, but I believe we're just about to get into the voting period. So most of the Tesserae have been found for this week. Um, it might be all of them. I would need to fact check, but we should get into the voting period. And then that's going to determine, you know, placement for these and whether or not more points go to ENL, more points go to Res or Nemesis. Right. And they had, we'll they had to do all a little bit of next week. Yeah, they had to do a little bit of Calvin Ball too because some of the first ones didn't quite work out and placements didn't didn't work, so they kind of had to make some adjustments on the fly to get it started. So, well, well, and I guess that's that's what I'm. I don't know if "worried" is the right word, but if it gets down to the end and it's like, okay, the prize for the winner is this, and the prize that if Nemesis wins is so much worse than, say, if the Resistance wins. Right? Would then, if Resistance was ahead, but still below Nemesis, would it then, you know, would ENL work with Resistance to get them to win ahead of Nemesis? No. Like, I, I see that being able to happen. I mean, and probably the other way, uh, where Resistance would have to, way. you know, help ENL to. Yeah, we'll have defeat. to help you guys out. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, they're already thirty points in, right? So we gotta make thirty points. How much more do we have if we're at seven? Oh, and if they don't get any more, there's like sixty something, seventy, or is it more than that? Uh, and and ten of ten of those Nemesis points were just from this week. So when the game started, um, Nemesis only had twenty points. So okay. <laughs> they're already up ten points this first week. So I mean, I mean, it's. You know, I don't know. Is this another? Let's get them to work together to beat the third faction. I, my tinfoil hat theory is that all the stuff that's been going on for the past few months that we've all been angry is the old like, hey, the the you know the enemy of my enemy is my friend, and this is how you get the factions to work together is they all hate Niantic. Yeah, see, that's that's the reaction I wanted to get there. Just the complete, like, oh, God, he's off the deep end now. Okay, so. <laughs> well, it looks like they've placed about 18 out of, I would say, 180 uh, markers on the board. So there's there's plenty to go. Okay, good. Um, we just got to get a lot more now. Yeah. yeah we, we've still got 165 that are undiscovered. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So we got plenty, plenty of time to figure it out, and you know, I, I think that's part of the fun with uh, ingress. I mean, I don't, I don't think we've gone into anything knowing all the rules, all the, you know, all the uh, uh, planning that you can do, or or you know how you can do things. Every every anomaly is a little bit different, and uh, so that's part. Yeah, of the draw, I, think I think that's good, but I think. Before the anomaly starts, you should know all the rules. Well, yeah, <laughs> like, at least hopefully. at least a day, hopefully. maybe two. Like, spelled out and uh, like the field tests. Like so, uh, we can go ahead and drop into field tests, I guess, because like we did the field tests and um, they were really good about like at the end because of I guess some issues. Uh, I don't know if y'all had uh, any troubles with the. Um, the kilometers walked. I forget how many you had yes. to have now. Yes, yeah, it was a uh, three three k. If I'm three k, yeah, um, yeah. Like my counter stopped like counting. Difficult. Yeah, yeah. I 
I ended up, um, I think somebody early on was just kind of yelling in the streets, like, your, your scores will refresh every five minutes. Um, so it was almost like every five minutes on the dot, I was leaving the app, going to look at what my scores were, and seeing that I was like in the elite category for everything, but yet hadn't hit the kilometers walk threshold. So I think yeah. at some point during the last 20 minutes of the field test that I attended in Rhode Island, I was just running down the street, just like kilometers walked. I gotta get kilometers walked, and people are like, "What is what is wrong with this person? <laughs> are you um, Android?" Yes, yeah. Because I think, at least at our side, it seemed like more Android people were having issues with the kilometers walked. Like, mine stopped completely, I, and I had to drop yeah. out of the um, app completely uh, and go back in to uh, get it kicking. And that was the only one I missed. Oh, no. So you ended up getting the, the retroactive push for the correction yeah, then. Yeah, because okay, I, I ended up probably, I would probably say I probably went more like 6K, uh, trying to get that at the end, I was near running <laughs> with the thing yeah, doing laps I, around this. Well, I'd like to say, really, oh, really wish I had I tracked my die. distance for that because um, I was rucking it as well and just just running up hills in in Rhode Island, just thinking like, okay, I've definitely done more than three k because the I think the play boxes had to be like a two kilometer square or circle or something, um, and the way that the Rhode Island box was laid out was. Niantic, whoever whoever was bored that day and drawing up the the play box where the artifacts were going to spawn, it was in a heart. So like our play box had a little heart for <laughs> the artifact portals, and I just told myself from the outset, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to just make a loop and just get every single one of those artifact media, and that should get me my 3K. I should get all the other requirements in there. Uh, I had almost run two complete loops by the time the 90 minutes were up, and. I got to, I think, third place for, for artifacts collected, but yet just barely scraped by with the, the 3K requirement. Uh, my pet theory was that because I am a person that will glyph hack while I'm still walking, is that every single time that the scanner wasn't just sitting on the main screen, that I wasn't getting counted for, you know, kilometers walked. At least yeah. that's my own opinion. No, I think that, that actually sounds like um, a valid thing because I was going in and out, um, you know, adding rezos and shields and stuff because it was like, oh, you got to be doing actions or whatever. But I was probably in portals like, you know, 80% of the time just trying to uh, get that. And I heard uh, some people were saying uh, like dropping keys and picking those up was better. So you're just staying out of, uh, you know, portals and things like that. So, uh, yeah, that makes sense. But it was a, a field test. It was the first one they did. And they had um, a bunch of different events, and it was all agent-based. It wasn't faction-based at all. So everybody was working against everyone else, kind of. Um, I do think, um, uh, for the most part, I think it, there was a lot of really good stuff with it. And um, it was fun getting to see everybody, of course. And I would say, um, I, don't, I, I don't know if I'm an idiot, and the rules don't make sense to me as much. But, um, like, my only feedback, I guess, was some of it was, like, so, like, when I was looking at the thing, and I was like, oh, man, I'm elite on these things, I was done, like, with that category, because <laughs> I thought I had gotten to the elite. Like, I thought it was, like, a speed thing, like, the first person to get... No, you hit the um, threshold. But right, but it... Was not like, doing things. I feel like they probably shouldn't put the elite there like that to, like... Mm -hmm. Because to me, that was like getting the badge, right? It was like, oh, you got it. Ding, you got the achievement. Move on. You know, so then I focused on the, the next thing. And, and then also at the end, I noticed I was like, oh, wait, they're all gone. Like, it, uh, you know, it's just kind of like, and that was just, I guess, me. I don't know. Maybe I was the only one. But I know the, the agent with me, um, They, I think they thought the same thing, too. But um, I guess I'm the only one. You knew it was... The most? I think you're it. I think you're it. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Did you do Everybody a field test? With Rhode Island, they're just they, like... They may have ah. lowered the bar for you. Who knows? Uh, they need to. <laughs> that's for sure. I need to be able to step over it. Did you that's get right. to a field test, Dewey? No, I did not. should have come down to Birmingham. I, I, I'm telling you, 
I, we need to get to another anomaly together. I'm thinking they're going to have an anomaly in St. Louis. Of course, it's going to be in like February, so it's going to be like scraping ice off your scanner. But uh, you can well, come up and enjoy the snow. And that was one of the uh, sites that they uh, pre-announced yeah. a little uh, prematurely, I guess. Yeah. Uh, That's why so, I said maybe. So sites were were well, we nothing. Um, nothing's been confirmed yet. Nothing's confirmed. So, no. Yeah, it's not not only and, confirmed, but the, I mean they confirmed that they may change. So don't. And also, no. one of the dates was a Tuesday from the last round. So <laughs> yeah. unless we're really going that out, could on be, that could be a mistake. Going. Yeah, you, you might you might want to hold off on you know purchasing tickets or anything yeah. for just a little don't, bit longer. Don't get any plane tickets right just yet. Uh, oh yeah, uh, definitely don't do that yet. Um, unless that's Ingress Con. And they're extending it there out. You you know? Know. Who knows? There maybe. You know. Maybe you're on to something, Goonie Guy. It's, it's all indoors. An indoors maybe. anomaly. Maybe. Week-long thing. I think but they actually tried that once. Uh, did they try an indoor anomaly? Comic-Cons or something. Yeah. Like portals inside the building. It, it's a very small event. I, I think it was <laughs> successful just based off the fact, you know, tiny attendance. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, let's see. We did Umbra Tessellation. Field test. I, I, before we go off field test... Um, I can't wait for the next one. I think it was great. Uh, it's a new event and type of thing, and I can't wait for them to do it again. Of course, the first one had some hiccups expected, um, always with, with first events. So um, give them a pass on that one and check out the next one. Um, and thanks to everyone who, like the POCs at all the events, because all the events all around were, you know, run by players, and, the, and I'm sure... I know the site I went to, they did a great job. So Yeah, they always do. They always do. Um, something that we didn't have on our sheet, but I just threw on there, we might want to talk a little bit about is Wayfarer. This is the uh, new OPR, basically? Yeah, it's the, o- it's, it's the Poke, Way- Poke o- OPR. Poke OPR, I guess. It's, uh, I haven't used it much. I just kind of looked at it mu- a little bit. But, you know, first thing we kicked it up, we're like, oh, boy, this sure looks like Pokemon. And uh, so I think that that's going to, at least in our area, in this ruler area, uh, we have a number of players that we know are just pokey players. You know, they're they're just trying to get to level ten, and that uh, way they can put in their favorite pokey stops. But uh, they typically don't play well with others. You know, they just they just want to get their score. You know, they don't care if they mess up an op or if they play well with the other children. They're on the same side and that kind of stuff. A lot of times. Um, and, you know, they're not interested in learning how to play the game. They just, you know, I just want to be able to make a pokey stop and get it in the right S2 cell and and, and make it a gem. Um, so I'm thinking the Wayfarer is going to change that dynamic. Uh, I think we're going to see less of those players um, that are just in it for, for that. So do they um, still have to get to a certain level to get into Wayfarer? I am not 100% sure. Like originally it was what forty? They had to be forty, or was it thirty something? Yeah. So I, I haven't seen like the exact requirements, but I, I do think some people were saying that there was you know some sort of requirement for Pokemon Go. So there would still be level specific requirements for each Niantic game. I don't know if anything's been said, but yeah, there's something that was put out 18 October, and they're saying level. 10 plus Ingress players and level 40 Canadian and German Pokemon Go players. There we go. It's Wayfair. Hmm. And it promised to release it uh, globally for Pokemon by the end of the year. So I think they can do that right in there, right on their phone. Well, and this looks really cool. So I logged into it for the first time. I'll be honest, I haven't gone to OPR in a while. I'm a horrible agent and I'm sorry. But it (laughs) actually has nomination management. Yeah. Like that's something yeah. we've all been asking for. History. Yeah, for so you see, you see how many of those that you that have been lost in limbo and and uh, that kind of that kind of stuff, which is really nice. Yeah. So anyway, uh, go check it out. You can still just go to opr.ingress.com and it'll forward you over to the new wayfarer.nianticlabs.com and you can log in with your ingress uh, email that you used for OPR and um, it looks pretty slick. I haven't had time to actually uh, look at everything, but it looks like you have like a, they have featured waste spots so you can start and choose different ones and, and go. So, um, and, and if you're a pokey player, then you, you want 
you, you need a pokey stop, you know, talk to an ingress player. I've got a couple of them around here like, hey, you know, out here at this nature preserve, can you put in some more portals? Say, so, yeah, I can put a couple more in. And, and, you know, they'll say, can you put it here? I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can put it there, but I can get it close. And that makes a big difference for them, whether it's a gym or, or something like that. So, yeah. Well, and I mean, the system isn't isn't um, without its flaws anyway. Even with the ingress agents, I know there's there's uh, apparently networks that um, work together to get specific portals uh, created or denied. Apparently, uh, I found out recently we have a. Um, there's a re- resistance agent here who apparently, uh, if he likes you and you tell him you want a portal uh, made, he can it's a different cop. do it. But apparently, the people he doesn't like, uh, oddly enough, your portals always get denied. Yeah. So yeah. I, I hope I hope that they um, keep track of that sort of thing and um, see if like, oh look, these same people are voting on the same exact portal every time. Um, and don't do it if you're in a group that you're like it's one thing to like hey go check portals go OPR because I submitted some but it's another to be like hey this portal don't go there and don't accept it because it's not in our area or it's yeah, in so much it's not in our, our like, interest that's just cheating just the same as everything else so just just play legit and have fun but anyway so I, I'm excited about this I, I'll uh, get into Wayfarer and um uh, Try it out more. See if I can get my next badge. And that's something I can uh, that recon. probably do. I've got the first one. I just need the second one. Ooh, we can race on that because I've also <laughs> been slacking. <laughs> I'm still bronze. I'm still bronze on recon. I'm horrible. But with the colder weather coming up, that's, that's when I'll start. Got to do something to do. Yep. yep. So, so also something else to do. Um, updates. Prime updates, a bunch have happened. Uh, there's a bunch of awesome changes. Uh, I've even been able to see those, and uh, I feel like they've added in a lot of the quality of life improvements and uh, things that were missing from Redacted. It, it seems, I don't know, like I think a new player getting in today, um, if they just fix that speed lock in low cells, oh. that's the one thing. It's the only thing, color. but um, everything yeah. else, man, I, I'm digging it. Yeah, the speed lock is just it's just killer. I mean, it, it it cost me a layer on on a, a checkpoint today, you know. And I was like, no, I if I drive forty, I won't get speed locked, and I probably went forty two. It seemed like I was speed locked for ten minutes, but I was probably speed locked for two. But it seemed like ten minutes. So let, let me ask you this: Y'all may just know offhand or have a opinion. Speed lock is it there to keep people from playing while they're driving, or is it there to keep spoofers from spoofing, or for some other reason? Uh, I would say it's probably more of an anti-spoofing thing. I mean, honestly. Playing while you're driving is a bad idea, but then you've got those instances where you've got somebody that's in the passenger seat. I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think more more for the anti-spoof side myself, mostly because of the fact that you look at Niantic's other games. Like, uh, I don't know if Wizards has the functionality, but I know with Pokemon Go, they actually pop up the button if you're going too fast. It says, you know, like, I am a passenger, and you can just tap through it. So yeah. not sure why we don't have that across the board for all games but speedlock i think does present as if it's more the anti-cheating than punishment for car dressing or similar things yeah 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 and um i and i think it is too just because like you said if you, if you kind of go with the other games like there's not speedlock in there at least i haven't noticed it because that's what i go to when uh you know i can't when you're speed lock. ingress and i'm speedlock <laughs> Um, so pro tip with the prime speed locking, um, you, if you exit out of the game entirely before you get on the road or before you're going to move, then open the app when you arrive, you shouldn't be dealing with much in the way of speed locking, but then obviously you're waiting for the app to open. Yeah. Which is much faster now. So, yeah. And, and on top of that, if you have, if you're using an Android, um, even though if you've hit in the back air and you're saying, I want to quit and exit, yes, it's still running. 
so you may have to tap tap and say what are my what are my apps that are running and you'll find it's kind of running in the background and then you got to close it again um, so swiping them up and killing them like that doesn't actually them up kill, and kill them. them oh that does yeah, well, kill okay. if you if you hit if you hit back arrow a couple of times it says do you want to exit and you say yes it's still running in the background oh okay uh, so you kind of have to hit hit whatever apps you have and swipe through and find it and then swipe up and it will die but yeah and that's what happened to me today i forgot i forgot to close it down and then when I got to the my throw point, I'm like, oh crap! Like I I would go for it, so going with the theory that it's for spoofing and not for just general driving. I I wonder if they would think about adding in some new feature where it's um I don't know some way to like um, prove that you're not a you know spoofing that's a little more stricter than the normal like thing but if you do it uh you know hey you have access to you know my phone and passwords everything have it all just you're don't not, speed you're not verified yet <laughs> yeah, I'm you verified. Doing, yeah you're not verified like what is this like right yeah. there not a spoofer <laughs> verified spoofer <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, one thing I guess that I would like to see is I'm verified. Like, speed lock, the speed lock for Prime just feels like it's it's unforgiving and lifting. So there have been instances, plenty of instances with Redacted where I would get speed locked going too fast between yeah, oh yeah, you know, locations. Or I was on the highway for a while and then pulled off somewhere to to hit a portal. But it, it always seemed to be if you stayed put for you know two oh. minutes at a maximum somewhere around there, speed lock would go away. Um, in Prime, I had an example where I was driving to a, a local trail portal uh, in my home area, and I forgot to close out the app. And I'm taking a leisurely, like, 35-mile-per-hour drive down some back roads, and then I parked the car, hiked 35 minutes to a portal. Oh, wow. Went to open the app so I could start farming and realized I'm speed-locked. So I figured, okay, well, I'm just going to see how long this takes. This was maybe a week before Redacted went away. I'm like, I'm just going to see how long it takes. I was able to completely burn the portal out using the Redacted scanner before the Prime scanner would let me do anything. Wow. Um, wow. So that was just, yeah. if they could shorten it somehow, make it more realistic to what the Redacted scanner was doing, I think a lot of people would have less complaint. Some sort and of, I, like, I, refresh, re- yeah. like the old, you know. The old refresh data. thing button thing yeah and I've, I've noticed the same thing with you that, that when it when it is speed locks like okay you might as well just shut this down shut it completely down and wait a minute or so and bring it back up and that does seem to lift the speed lock a little quicker than just sitting there waiting on it i don't well, know whether that's perception or not i'll, I'll give you access to my camera niantic so you can see that i'm there <laughs> You can get one of those little things like they have for uh, insurance companies that you put in your car. Yeah. So that they can so they can track you with that. <laughs> I I'll do it for ingress, connect, right? Little Bluetooth connection. Yeah, I got to stay near the car. Uh, Just need a glyph capture. You know, as soon as you as soon as you like, do you want to unlock the speed lock? You got a glyph. <laughs> there you go. And, and it's like damned if you do, damned if you don't, because it's like I like I don't blame you for it. Like I, we don't want spoofers either. So it's it's like yeah. Uh, no, it's like I get that it it's probably needed, um, but uh, possibly there's some way around it. And that could be one of the things they're working on. I'm sure that they, you know, anything that's a new app, you're always refining and making it better. And sometimes you, you know, you make it better for one platform, and it just goes to hell on the other one. Yeah. Uh, so. So anyway, that's that's my thoughts on that. That's um, uh, we talked about field test. Uh, Redacted is dead. Hinted at that. Um, did X you see any big shards happened? Did you see any big F fields in your area? No, no. I, I just saw the images, but I yeah. I wasn't looking around in my area, so I don't know. I, I had one that kind of covered me over, and it was green. And I had to go out and kill it. <laughs> But I let it set for I let it set for a whole I think two cycles just you know as a farewell to redacted. I yeah I was glad to see redacted go. <laughs> I like I said it before. Coming for you with the pitchforks, gonna guy. Do what? They'll be coming for you with the pitchforks, gonna yeah. guy. Well, like, I, I don't want to get on the bad end of that. <laughs> right. No, I I hate it for the people who loved redacted and who don't want to go forward. But I. 
I love it because it, without getting rid of redacted, we're in this stagnant state where we can't move forward. And the cool stuff we want added to the game, we can't have. And the bugs aren't going to get fixed until everyone's playing it and reporting those bugs. Yeah. And so the more people that do it, which now you have to, the faster things will get fixed and the better it will be for everyone. So that's why I yeah, love it. And you're, see- you're seeing a few of those things that they couldn't do a redacted pop-up. Like, you know, you'll start out the scanner and here's a, here's a message about, hey, we got anomalies this weekend or the street sweeper, sweeper's live, so make sure that you watch what's there you know i don't remember yeah. seeing that in yeah the sweeper redacted. notifications were nice i actually had a That's couple nice. of people like what's the sweeper and i'm like <laughs> how have you survived this long um, you never drop no, anything I, I definitely agree like the prime scanner having used it pretty much i, I got into the beta phase um back during the the colon challenge um couldn't say anything then so like as soon as it went live it was like finally we can talk about the prime scanner and even, you know, from the beginning of launch a couple months out, the, the improvements were significant already. Yeah. And I feel um, it's maybe like a month, month and a half ago now when we had the update that kind of gave a little bit more color contrast to items. Um, that really seemed to improve a lot of things. Um, I'm getting less crashes. And I think through talking with a lot of agents, uh, the overall main complaints that everybody seemed to have with the Prime Scanner, the ping, uh, mostly due to accessibility issues. So I've, I've talked with a lot of people that have said, you know, they have photosensitivity issues, so they get migraines looking at the ping that's happening all the time. Um, so really, it, it seems to be down to just a couple of really core problems. Uh, the long link bug that exists, um, just a few other smaller things. Yeah. And, then and I, I want to... I want to touch base with a couple agents that I know when we were in Madison, there were a few agents saying, you know, when redacted goes, I'm going with it. You know, I'm just going to quit. And I'm like, okay, I want to see if that was just talk or if, uh, or if they actually did go. I was going to say, has anyone actually gone though? I like, I, I feel I, like that was definitely a talk thing. Like, I think it was a talk thing. Locals, so they're going to evaporate. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody in my local community was just like, we're gone. See ya. And yet, they're still Brooklyn there. came and went, and we ended up, you know, getting some people out to Brooklyn. We have people in chats talking about when are yeah. we going to get the next farm together. Um, you know, I, th- I think we want we want to continue with ingress. Yeah. It's, it's going to take a little bit of time on our part, on Niantic's that part. Muscle, muscle memory going and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's just a learning curve. I think I've got one one agent that, but I think he was semi retired anyway. You know, he would come out of. You know, if there was a deep enough green over him, he'd go out and blow something up to get rid of it. Um, so, but I think now he's pretty much fallen into that terrible thing called real life. Um, and so. <laughs> real life. Well, um, we have one, I guess, vanguards were announced. Speaking of, can you oh, say anything about that vanguard? <laughs> oh goodness! So uh, you know, I think I'll give the 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 boilerplate spiel to be that dry, boring person. But uh, yay! Maybe rather than that, I'll just say if if there's anything, if you're listening to this, anybody um, that you feel you want to reach out to a Vanguard and talk about something, um, I'm always available on Telegram. I can probably yell at Goonie Guy to include that somewhere. I'm also in the Agent Academy Telegram group, so if you're on there, you'll see me from time to time. Um, I'm definitely accessible via DM. Just hit me up. I'm always willing to talk to people. Hopefully, I'll see you out at events. Um, pretty frequent anomaly goer. I was at the field test recently. You'll see me at mission days, all that jazz. But really, vanguards, we are player advocates. So we are a collective of individuals that are agents just like everybody else that enjoy ingress and want to share these experiences. And our responsibilities are pretty much to take as much feedback is we want to take and just communicate that to Niantic. Um, And then if there are any other specific issues that people want to talk about, that's what we're here for. Um, There's also a Vanguard FAQ that you can go and read and we can link that to in the show notes. Um, It's really up to each individual Vanguard what they want to do uh, in terms of player advocacy, but that is essentially what we are, player advocates. Well, thank you for advocating for me. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. So as soon as the, the scanner batch request came in, Goonie guy's like, "Okay, I want this. I want that." I, want <laughs> I figured he was going to ask you to you know, fix a parking ticket or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I can't can't, can't elevate any you know parking tickets. Sorry, so, you're on your own with that one. So, are what what are some of the things that you know you players might bring to a Vanguard, uh, like spoofing or uh, or is it more about like just issues? comments about the game and issues and like scanner wise does that a little column a a little column b um if there is a rampant spoofer somewhere yeah you can always feel free to reach out to a vanguard and talk through that one thing that i will suggest i don't know if the faq speaks to it specifically but we cannot take action on anything unless you have a ticket so if you're coming to me and you've got huge wall of text that says vane we need to do this right now please open a ticket with Niantic. Um, <laughs> then we can have the discussion and we can figure out how to, to progress through those things. But, you know, really it's it's anything. Yeah. Anything to do with Ingress that you want to talk to a Vanguard with, you can. Yeah. but I, And I would say probably don't go to you before, like, like don't you, hey, every time you think a sus- suspected spoofer, you know, don't hit Vane up. Go to the <laughs> go to the support first. Support dot uh, ingress dot com or is it Remy? Ta- have a little talk with Remy. Ingress. Yeah, talk to Remy. Bottom right, um, he'll get everything situated, and if it continues, then maybe hit Vane up and say what's and, up. And I will let you know that process does work. I know an agent that got banned. Is that you? It- I, I'm not going to say it, it took it took more than ten days, but it that that process does work. It does work. Oh, good. Well, this has been a um, a longer show than some. Um, we needed it because we've been gone a while. I'm sorry about that. Hopefully, we'll be back uh, soon. I know uh, next week I will be releasing a website Thursday night, so you always expect stuff to break uh, the day after this life and then the week after that is like halloween ish but maybe if uh everybody's uh recovered from halloween maybe we can do it that friday so maybe we can do a a show from the field we can all take our phones and go out in the field and do a field show there we go yeah yeah yeah. that'll work something weird (laughs) new um but uh before we go do you want to give out the code vein this is chosen by vein this week oh geez oh oh no i don't have the notes up hold on it's it's the one you picked <laughs> just yeah it's just all right the achievement code for this week agents is do i just say it yeah yep. like it's been so long it's been so long <laughs> okay so the achievement code this week is a a coffee a a very difficult i know but i think we can do this together if not Please let me know. <laughs> and I've already tested it, so it works. And um, go get the badge. Uh, JBJ Blaze will uh, let yeah, us know. I'll let us know whether sure. it worked. Um, and then uh, next time we have you on, Vane, hopefully it's uh, you know next week, the week after, uh, we're going to talk about those hint bottle caps we didn't get to. <laughs> totally forgot about it. I've got the whole bag here. Hold on. Let me Look crinkle it for those people that are listening to the audio only. I can hear all the individual caps just floating around and now, all those juicy codes. Now, have you tried just one of them to make sure you just didn't get a bag of, like, all I, used caps? Oh, I haven't yet. So, I mean, we could read one out if we, if we feel like it. Hold on. Let me uh, crack the bag here. You have to get the light to put behind <laughs> it. and. Oh, goodness. These things are always so hard to read. Right. <laughs> all right. This one's going out live. Uh, M six six nine I four K X. Oh nope, no good. Trying to, get, trying to type it in no, very very quickly. <laughs> that'd be, that'd I'm be sure cool. someone in the chat will go drink your oval teen. <laughs> <Right. laughs> and JBJ Blaze did check out the achievement code and it does work. So thank you for checking that out. You can go to go, Agent JBJ. Academy podcast.com and and get your own code there every episode we give one out there's also codes for when you uh meet one of us in person in an anomaly or in an event just ask us for a card um and we'll give it to you and uh that's all i got that's all i got anybody got anything else before we roll out the door 
I, I'd like to say we missed Zelly Belly. We missed her. Every week. Every week. So I hope she's doing well. She's, she's doing probably, good. She's, doing she's good. probably hip deep in snow already. Oh, goodness. <laughs> probably. 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 But uh, um, come back next time. Uh, go to our TG channel and uh, follow us on Twitter. That way you'll know when the next episode is happening. We will tweet it out. And um, we will post it in the chat. And people will ask, too. And it's a good chat. There's a lot of great uh, info in there. And, and people are having a lot of fun. So, yeah. thanks, Vane. How it, was it horrible? No, no, this was fun. Yeah. Okay, I, I like this. It's it's definitely you know I'll have to I'll have to make sure I get my script right and everything, all prim and proper. But no, this is great. Good, good. And Dewey J, you're doing good. You'll come back again too. Yep, I'll make sure that it's, it's nice and blue when I show up. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> when you get that other agent, uh, we'll get the other, to blue, the get other blue agent going. Yeah, it'll be a nemesis agent. So that's, Ooh, there the we agent. go. We, yeah, I got to get a red faction in here. There we go. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.